Fluffy Bunny Dongo. Just didn't want to run in the house with knives. The release of Monster Hunter Rise, I wanted to make the Fluffy Bunny Dongo and we're gonna be making it with this. This is a mixture of glutinous rice flour and Shido Ko to make our Dongo Ko. So if you wanna pick this up, link is down below in the description where you can just order some and just mix it with water. Now take your pre-mixed dongo ko mixture, place it into a large bowl, and then realize that you're actually making three separate dongos, so you do need to separate this. Separate this into equal parts, and in my case, I have about 88 grams worth of dongo mixture per batch. After getting all three of your batches loaded with those 88 grams of dongo, we also need to measure out 200 grams or 200 milliliters worth of water. That is also going to be split three ways, so just split it as you do your dongo, it's going to be fine. Now this first one that we're making is a toasted sesame dongo, which honestly, it's up to creative freedom on this. I don't know quite what they used, but we're doing that. I'm using 20 grams worth of toasted sesame seeds, placing it directly into my bowl and giving it a good stir. After you can't really stir this around with a spoon too much, you can start using your hands to start bringing the dongo mixture together. It's going to start looking like this clumpy bit of Play-Doh. Give it a few kneads in the bowl, making sure that any excess dongo flour is captured within your mixture. Then add in six grams worth of sugar because you forgot which should, should have gone in during the dry mixture portion. So go ahead and just add your six grams of sugar to each of your batches. Now back to the toasted sesame dongo, go ahead and continue kneading this now that it has sugar in it, which it should have had in the first place, Paul. And you're going to be left with this Play-Doh mixture. Once you can remove it from the bowl and no excess is left, this is when you can start kneading it on your cutting board. I did use a bench scraper to kind of help me out with this part, and you're really just trying to hydrate all of that flour with that little bit of water. Once that's done, place it in the bowl and set it aside and move on to the next batch. Now the next batch is the same thing, 88 grams worth of flour with 66 grams worth of water, but this one is going to be strawberry flavored. I'm using 25 grams worth of dehydrated strawberries, followed by about 20 grams worth of chopped almonds. You can use pistachios, walnuts, really whatever you really want to do. Now give this a quick mix with your spoon, making sure you incorporate all those flavors together and then start bringing it together with your hands to really make sure you hydrate that dough. Now the thing is with those dehydrated strawberries is that it requires more water, so in hindsight I probably should have used a bit more water for this. Now the final dongo we're going to be making is a vanilla vanilla bean maple syrup dongo. Yes, double vanilla. To your dongo mixture, I'm adding in around 10 grams worth of maple syrup syrup, followed by that 66 grams worth of water. Give us a quick mix and just appreciate this. I wish you guys could smell that freaking maple syrup with the vanilla in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Never actually put maple syrup in my dongo before. And make sure you do incorporate all of that dongo flour before removing it out of the bowl, so this way it's really easily worked in. 100% like playing with Play-Doh, but better, because you could actually eat it afterwards. Guess you could do Play-Doh too, but. And with that, all three of your dongo are ready to go. Now, if you want to be as cool as Emmy made, you can just go ahead and cook this as is and have a giant thing of mochi. But instead, I'm gonna be cutting mine into four equal pieces for the strawberry one. The strawberry one did have some extra bulk because of the strawberry powder, so I was able to get four equal pieces from here. After you get your four equal pieces, make sure you ball these up as nicely as possible, which does take a little bit of practice, but just put some time into it. After getting all four of your strawberry balls ready to go, do the same process with the other two flavors. Now the vanilla maple flavor actually only yielded three, again, because it had less bulk. The sesame flavor also only yielded three, so you're just gonna have one extra strawberry, which you shouldn't really complain about, should you? The only thing left to do is to boil these, and because we're using the dongo ko, you do need to boil them. Now cooking these off is super simple. You just need a large pot of boiling water, drop your mochi straight into the water, and when you do drop these in, they will sink to the bottom. Now be careful when you do this because if they sink to the bottom and they stay there, they can stick to the bottom causing them to burn. So as soon as you drop them into the water, make sure you do poke them around a little bit to make sure they're free from that bottom. My balls are starting to float. Yep. I don't know who hired that guy, but after they float to the surface and have stayed at the surface for around two to three minutes, we can pull these out of the water. These are ready to go. No! No! What is this? There's a nipple in it now! After indenting a nipple onto one of the dongo, grab the strainer that you were using earlier and try to remove them as quickly as possible. I also tried chopsticks, but uh... No, it's even worse! So yeah, now that you've made three things dirty, stick to the strainer you used originally and just remove them from the water, Paul, please. Can we make this happen? <laughs> Let these cool down completely before you decide to skewer them or do anything else with them. Don't touch them. Just walk away. Look at this FNG. Put on your t-shirt. Put it. Where is your shirt, dude? What's ha what's happening to your hair right now? Grab your hat too. I blame you entirely for this. You may be wondering, Paul, why do your dongo look slightly different? That's because we had a glitch in the matrix and I just remade some dongos. So now we can start where we left off. 
Yeah. So now with the second batch of dongo, we're going to dip these in chocolate after melting it down. I ended up using a microwave just to melt it for about 30 seconds, and then I dipped the top piece of my dongo into this chocolate. Remember that top piece is the vanilla maple, so this one's gonna have that really nice chocolate vanilla maple flavor. I ended up using a cup to make sure that these were upright, so this way I didn't have to lay them down and let the chocolate kind of get everywhere. The three of these fit really nicely in the cup, and then I took a bamboo skewer and gave them little facial features. Feel free to have some fun with this. I could only trust myself to draw two eyeballs and something of a mouth. And once you have them dressed and ready to go, these just need to cool down so the chocolate can harden slightly. Put them in the freezer for like five minutes. And can we just appreciate how cute these fluffy bunny dongo really are? I ended up throwing these in the fridge for a few minutes and didn't let them set enough as is showcased by them falling over in the refrigerator and some of the chocolate kind of smearing. But in the end, we do have our fluffy bunny dongo from Monster Hunter Rise. There it is guys, the Yaki Dongo from Monster Hunter Rise. And we have three different flavors. Remember this one's the maple vanilla with the chocolate, then the strawberry with the almond, and then finally the toasted sesame on the bottom. You can honestly, these are, go so quickly. So feel free to make a bunch of them. Uh, mine kind of fell over on each other in the fridge, so if you don't want to put chocolate on it, maybe just drizzle it, you know, instead of dipping, but you do you, so uh, cheers. I'm gonna go for the, the chocolate one first because that's my favorite. Mmm, look at how, can you see in the inside? Super chewy, the maple comes through, the vanilla bean is really subtle, then the chocolate takes over. And now the strawberry one with the dehydrated strawberry. <laughs> it's so chewy. It's a little subtle. And the next time I make a strawberry one, I'm actually gonna try it with strawberry jam because I think that's gonna be killer. That one is good. The toast sesame kills it. My favorite, vanilla bean and chocolate. I can't, I can't, there's no way. Just like there's no way you're not gonna check out chefpk.com for this recipe and so much more. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed. And remember, keep playing with your food.